Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. We will continue our discussion on the description of strain, uh, what we have just looked at yesterday. I will quickly review what we have just uh, started with. Uh, so, this, yeah, this is exactly uh, what I have shown in the slide uh, we have just gone through. Uh, similar to stra stress, whatever the, the description we have seen, uh, we are going to see uh, the similar kind of a description a strain at a point. Uh, this is what I just started yesterday and uh, we went through some normal classification of the strains and then we also looked at what, are, what is uh, a normal strain and a shear strain and it is exactly the similar uh, terminology as we have seen in stress, normal stress and here it is normal strain shear stress and shear strain, uh, similar geometrical conditions will be uh, considered here as well. So, I will quickly skip this uh, slides because uh, we have already gone through this and uh, one um, point I just want to uh, mention here is uh, uh, before we get into the, the details of uh, this normal and shear strain, there is another term we have seen that is called volumetric strain, uh, where uh, which is measure uh, which is uh, denoted as E, small e, uh, which is a change in volume uh, divided by original volume. Mm -hmm. And this volumetric strain is also uh, simply related to normal strain and that is exactly uh, I have stopped yesterday and then we will just uh, see from that uh, point. Okay. So, we are going to consider the rectangular uh, solid um, as an illustration. The original uh, shape is uh, like this, has the dimension of delta x and delta z and delta y, okay. And this is after the deformation, right. So, after deformation what happens? The delta x uh, becomes delta x plus epsilon delta x epsilon x, right. See 1 plus epsilon x and 1 plus epsilon y and 1 plus epsilon z. That is a increment in the strain in the all three mutual perpendicular directions. So, so how are we going to? Uh, so, write the equations like this. For the deformed body on the right hand side for this geometry, what we are uh, seeing here, the volume change uh, or the volume is given by, uh, since the, the change in volume is itself is given as a, a measure here. So, we directly write the volume of this uh, deformed body which is delta x times uh, 1 plus epsilon x delta y into uh, 1 plus epsilon y into delta z times 1 plus epsilon z which can be rewritten uh, like this, okay. So, if you recall that the strains are small, this is what we have just uh, uh, described in the beginning. Uh, some of the relations what we have just uh, uh, seen before also, these relations are uh, valid for a small strain. So, here also there is, we will be invoking this condition, so that we can neglect the higher order terms or the uh, if you just consider only this uh, first term, so then what we will get, well, what we will get is uh, something like this. Uh, v is approximately equal to delta x, delta y, and delta z times one plus epsilon x plus epsilon y and epsilon z, and which can be uh, rewritten like this. Uh, v v naught into 1 plus epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z. So, uh, this is a kind of a definition of uh, volumetric strain which becomes uh, small e is equal to capital V minus V naught divided by V naught which is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z, okay. So, this is a volumetric strain. And uh, what we have to remember is uh, these relationship, uh, they are all uh, applied at small strains only. 
okay. We are talking about elastic strain, but even there it is a small strain. So now we will uh, focus our attention on uh, details, uh, how we um, mathematically look at this uh, strain and uh, or mathematically describe in terms of small uh, equations uh, like what we have done in uh, stress at a point. Right? So similar thing we can just try to uh, get a physical meaning and this is the a fixed edge uh, on this left end and then you have the uh, member which is uh, fixed from one end and you can see that uh, the two points on this member a b the distance between a and b is dx and the distance between a and the fixed end is x so this is a undeformed region or undeformed member and this uh, bar is just pulled in this one direction, x direction. Okay. So, the what we are seeing here is uh, the displacement, right. So, the point A has moved from A to A dash. So, that is displacement is u and point B is moved here to B dash. The displacement is x plus du by dx times dx. So, what does it mean? So, it is not uh, the equal displacement uh, that is because the, the here it is considered the B which is here is far away from the fixed end. So, that displacement is more in B dash. So, the total displacement uh, or the distance between the A dash and B dash is, is equal to dx plus du by dx times dx. Right? So, that is how it is uh, represented. So, for that if you look at the, uh, the linear strain, uh, here we are talking about in one direction that is x direction here. So, the linear strain is uh, epsilon x is equal to del L by L. This is something which in fact even the very beginning or introduction of this course we have just seen change in length uh, by original length. So, similar to that this is a linear uh, strain. Okay. So, if you write it in terms of uh, according to this geometry what is shown here it is a dash b dash minus a b divided by a b and you can just uh, substitute these measures into these equations then you what you see is du by dx okay so simply what you get uh, the the linear strain along uh, the direction x is measured here as du by dx that is a displacement okay uh, displacement with respect to x direction that is linear strain x. This is for one dimensional case and uh, the displacement is uh, given by u is equal to e x times x. So, that is the displacement. To generalize uh, these two three dimensions, um, each of these components of displacement will be linearly related to each of the three initial coordinates of the point. So, what is that? it will be written like this. So, u uh, will have this uh, components from E x x in the capital X direction and E x y capital I mean this is y direction and this is from z direction. So, you can also uh, correlate this it is almost similarly you know uh, it is quite familiar to us right this kind of equation we have already seen uh, for the the stress right sigma xx sigma xy and sigma xz right so here it is e xx e xy and e xz so what is that it is simply the normal strain and the shear strain so for the three dis, uh, directions or displacements in the three uh, perpendicular directions and uh, coordinates so that is how you should look at it so generally you can write ui is equal to e i j in x i. It is a general notation. So, the coefficients uh, relating displacements with the coordinates of the point in the body are components of the relative displacement tensors. So, uh, you can see that um, e x x was uh, shown to be d u by d x and e y y is d v by d y and e z is a 
is equal to d w by d s d z ok. However, the other six coordinates are required for the further scrutiny. So, this is only a, a normal strain right. So, it is not the complete description the description is not ended here. So, we need uh, further six coefficients which uh, corresponds to other shears shear components. So, you can uh, we can also look at this uh, uh, diagram which we have already seen for in fact. So, just for the completion of this uh, derivation I have brought it here again. So, you see that uh, the square member uh, has been deformed uh, in, in the form of you know angular distortion or I would say the deformation is angular distortion uh, of this element here. So, what is this uh, deformation here? The deformation is uh, the member A, B, C, D has been deformed into A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash and this deformation is uh, not a linear deformation, but an angular deformation or called angular distortion. So, this the, the shear stress or shear strain here, it is not stress here, shear strain E y x and E x y, these are the uh, strains we are interested. So, what is that? How do we uh, find that? So, E x y for example, the, the displacement along the x direction. So, this is what it is E x and E y the same uh, nomenclature follows here two subscripts. So, it is in x direction. So, d d divided by d a. So, the d d length is here which is parallel to x and this is d a which will give you d u by d y ok that is the shear strain. Similarly, you have E y x that will be b b this is in y direction and divided by a b this distance will give you E y x that is d u uh, sorry d v by d x this should be d v by d x not uh, there is a correction here. Uh, no, 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 it is correct only. I am I'm, sorry, I am confusing here. So, let, let we will come to that later because we are talking about the shear strain, not the uh, normal strain here. Yeah, so now it will be uh, clear here. So, um, we can put it all these components uh, into the form of a matrix uh, for a three dimensional uh, strain. So, you can see that. Um, dou u by dou x and dou u by dou y and dou u by dou z and here um, dou v by dou x, dou v by dou y and dou v by dou z. So, I was correct. So, we can correct this now. So, it will be dou v by dou x. So, so here again um, e z x, e z y and e z z can be given by this dou w by dou x, dou w by dou y and dou w by dou z. Similar to this, we can just, uh, if you take a three dimensional figure and then it can be uh, simply worked out like this for this. So, similar to what we have seen in the stress. So, uh, what we have now seen so far is a linear uh, uh, strain, right. So, also the, the strain which has got uh, two components. What are those two components? The displacement components such as uh, E x y and y x etcetera produce both shear strain and rigid body rotation very important right. So, we have to uh, differentiate these two things uh, shear strain and rigid body rotation. So, look at this uh, figure A B C. The one which we have just now seen which is uh, simply an angular distortion. But uh, here what we are seeing is it is not a distortion here, it is simply a rotation right and here it is a simple shear right, just a simple shear. So, how do we distinguish these things? So, we need since we need to identify that part of the displacement that results in strain, it is important to break the displacement tensor into shear contribution and rotation contribution. So, we are going to uh, look at this displacement tensor and uh, we are going to break down into 
strain contribution and rotation contribution like what we have seen in the uh, stress tensor similarly we will uh, look at the uh, displacement tensor and also later we will also see that you know the strain tensor and we will also try to decompose so this is a notation here um, E i j is equal to epsilon i j plus omega i j, where E i j is equal to half dou u i by dou x j plus dou u j by dou x i is called the strain tensor. Okay, and uh, omega i j is equal to half into dou u i by dou x j minus dou u j by dou x i is called the rotation tensor. So, this uh, E i j can be uh, decomposed into this strain contribution and rotation contribution. Okay. So, this is very important. So, in general, uh, the displacement components such as uh, E x y and E y x etcetera produce both shear strain and uh, rigid body rotation. So, we can just uh, bring in, we can just replace all this uh, um, shear component and rotation component into the uh, matrix, 3 by 3 matrix that is uh, here it is a shear strain uh, matrix. So, you can see that we, we know that how, how you get uh, individual component like this and con component like this, this is what we have just uh, shown. So, we can simply plug into this uh, values and then you will uh, see that uh, we will get two uh, 3 by 3 matrix for uh, sh shear strain as well as uh, rigid body rotation uh, for these two components. So, this is just to give you an idea that uh, these two quantities are also a tensor quantities, right. Note that epsilon ij is a symmetric tensor since uh, epsilon ij is equal to epsilon ji etcetera, while omega ij is an anti-symmetric tensor. Please note that uh, omega ij is equal to minus omega ji. If omega ij is equal to 0, then the deformation set said to be irrotational. So, very a uh, useful uh, terminologies and uh, relations, right. So, uh, when we say that a deformation uh, also can be linear or it could be uh, angular distortion involving rotation and so on and when that can be easily represented by this uh, rigid body rotation tensor, okay. So, this is uh, useful. It looks, uh, uh, it is a very simple idea, but then when you put it in a form of uh, mathematical equation, it gives you much more uh, uh, clarity. So, that is about the uh, uh, total strain, but now we talk about the, the definition of shear strain which is uh, gamma i j is equal to 2 times epsilon i j is called engineering shear strain, okay. So, we will, we will get into the details of this and uh, as we proceed, but let us now see what is this engineering uh, definition of this uh, engineering shear strain. So, here it is uh, gamma x y is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou x and gamma x z is equal to dou v by dou y plus dou w by dou z and gamma y z is equal to dou v by dou y plus dou w by dou z, okay. And it is not a tensor quantity please uh, that is small information. So, now what we are going to do is uh, uh, in, a, in a complete analogy with the stress for isotropic body of the, the direction of the principal strains coincide with the principal stress directions. So, similar to a stress description uh, where we were analyzing the uh, principal planes and the principal stress and so on. Here again the direction of uh, principal strain and uh, you know the will be considered similar to uh, what we have just seen for the 
stress. So the element oriented along one principal strain axis will undergo a pure extension or contraction without any rotation or shear strain. The three principal strains are the roots of the cubic equation. So what we have seen uh, in the stress, it is the same uh, cubic equation for the uh, strain as well. Epsilon cube minus uh, I1 epsilon square plus I2 epsilon minus I3, I1, I2, I3 are invariant uh, uh, coefficients. You can see that uh, similar to stress, it can be written like that. So, just for the completion, uh, I have brought this and uh, also to emphasize the fact that it, it will be a complete, completely um, uh, similar to what we have seen in stress. The directions of the principal strains are obtained from the three equations analogous to the equations of the stress. So if you recall, uh, we wrote a similar equations for the stress by looking at the, the force equilibrium. So same similar thing can be uh, drawn for the strain as well. So continuing the analogy between stress and strain equations, the equation for the principal shearing strains can be obtained from the equation of uh, stress similar to what we have written there uh, we can also uh, get it from the uh, for the strain as well so if you recall uh, this all these equations exactly will match uh, uh, like what we have derived for the stress so i'm just uh, going little fast in this um, please have uh, revise this and then it will be clear. But just for sake of time, I just want to rush it through. So here comes the uh, another important uh, aspect. Uh, the In general, the deformation of a solid involves a combination of volume change and uh, change in shape. Okay. So the volume strain or the cubical dilatation is a change in volume per unit volume okay so consider let us consider the uh, the volume of a rectangular parallel pipe with the edges dx dy and dz so this uh, the volume in the strained condition it is exactly similar to what just we uh, uh, we have developed this equation in the beginning of this class the same equation here, the deformed body. Only the normal strains results in the volume change. Okay, so this is another important point. Only normal strains results in the volume change. So the the volume strain delta is equal to that is epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z. That's what you have seen. Uh, can we return it like this? So, and then you will get this equation. Uh, this we have already seen, so I am just skipping that uh, point. And uh, uh, this is again valid for small strains, and then we are neglecting the uh, higher uh, terms and uh, so on. And then we, we get the delta is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y and epsilon z. So note that the volume strain is equal in, equal to the first variant of the strain tensor, that is, delta is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z which is again equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and epsilon 3. We can also define uh, similar to mean stress, here it is a mean strain epsilon x plus epsilon y and epsilon z by 3, the mean strain or the hydrostatic component of the strain, very important. So like we have just looked at the hydrostatic stress um, and then here it is, here it is hydrostatic component of strain. So, which can be written uh, like this as a epsilon m is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z by 3 or it is written sometimes with this notation epsilon k k um, mostly in tensorial representation uh, which is also written as del by 3. So the part of train, strain tensor which, which is involved in a shape change rather than volume change is called strain deviator. 
see uh, these uh, particular uh, terminology right you know the stress tensor um, which is involved in a shape change or volume change they are very important in the uh, deformation or uh, theory of plasticity or metal forming and yielding theory and so on that is exactly uh, we are uh, we are emphasizing this so you will appreciate when we uh, refer this uh, term when we looked at the theory of plasticity and deformation or any metal forming processes. So, we will refer this uh, particular strain which uh, a strain deviator or a stress deviator which is responsible for the yielding process or a forming process. Okay? So, that is exactly we are, as an introduction if you are getting to the if you are familiar with these terms and uh, the corresponding equation then it will be easy to appreciate later without any confusion that is why we are seeing all these things in detail okay so the the, the strain tensor um, can be uh, responsible for a shape change rather or a volume change so to obtain the deviatoric strain we simply subtract uh, epsilon m is a mean strain from each of the normal strain components okay so it is uh, like uh, this this tensor matrix uh, is exactly the similar to the stress matrix so so the deviatoric strain uh, is epsilon ij prime is equal to um, a mod uh, epsilon x minus epsilon m that means the the we are just simply subtracting the the mean strain from the normal strain components. So, these are all normal strain components like you know uh, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and epsilon 3 something. So, so if you can just expand this uh, epsilon m and then if you rewrite this equation this uh, matrix will look like this. The division of the total uh, strain tensor into uh, deviatoric and uh, delay, delay Dilatational strains, dilatational strains is given in the tensor notation by this. So it is epsilon ij is equal to epsilon ij prime plus epsilon m, which is equal to epsilon ij minus delta by three times delta ij plus delta by three times small delta ij. So this is uh, a, a tensorial notation. Okay. So, for example, uh, when epsilon ij are the principal strains, uh, i is equal to j, the strain deviators are epsilon prime 1 1 is equal to epsilon 1 1 minus epsilon m. Similarly, epsilon prime, I mean 2 2 prime is equal to epsilon 2 2 minus epsilon m, so and so on. These strains represent elongations or contractions along the principal axis that change the shape of the body at the constant volume very important okay so the shape change um, strains and uh, so finally uh, we will just uh, look at one more uh, uh, component or the topic uh, hydrostatic or deviate, deviator components of the stress. This particular uh, topic we did not touch. Uh, now that we have just looked at uh, hydrostatic component of a strain and the deviatoric strain, uh, we will also see the similar uh, component here. The total uh, stress tensor can be divided into hydrostatic and mean stress tensor, which involves only pure tension or compression and a deviator or a mean stress tensor which represents the shear stresses in the total state of stress. Okay. In direct analogy with the situation for strain, the hydrostatic component of the stress tensor produces only elastic volume change. So this is uh, to be noted. So the hydrostatic component of a st stress tensor produces only elastic volume change and does not cause plastic deformation. So, we will refer exactly this particular uh, 
component in the uh, while we discussing the yield phenomenon right. So, the stress deviator involves in shearing stresses it is important in causing plastic deformation. So, the stress deviator uh, we have to identify how it uh, looks like. So, just to make it uh, more simple uh, this this schematic is given here. So, the total stress which involves uh, here it is a biaxial stress with a uh, shear strain uh, around it and which can be decomposed into a pure hydrostatic stress plus stress deviator ok. So, So, the hydrostatic st uh, stress is given by uh, like this sigma mean is equal to sigma k k similar to uh, epsilon k k by 3 here it is sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z divided by 3 and this is uh, this is how it is uh, written. So, in the tensorial uh, notation the decomposition of the shear stress is given by sigma i j is equal to sigma prime uh, sigma i j prime plus 1 by 3 delta i j times sigma k k. So, you rearrange this to get the uh, stress deviator uh, then it takes this form right. So, we can now put that uh, directly into the matrix uh, stress tensor matrix. So, here it is a deviatoric stress is equal to uh, this is each the the what should I say the principal stresses uh, are uh, subtracted from the the mean stress or hydrostatic stress component then the matrix will look like. So, this this matrix we are all familiar. So, I am just uh, going quickly. So, it can be seen readily that the stress deviator involves shear stresses for example, referring sigma i j to a system of principal axis. So, we can uh, sigma 1 prime which is equal to 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 divided by 3 which can be written like this and we can uh, rewrite this into this form. Sigma 1 prime is equal to 2 by 3 times sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 which is equal to 2 by 3 into tau 3 plus tau 2. So, this is also very familiar to us we have already seen what is this the these are all two shear stresses right uh, tau 3 and tau 2. If you recall we have in fact shown the actually the plane directions in the previous class we have shown. So, you just compare these two uh, where these shear stresses uh, are acting right exactly the sigma 3 and sigma 2 we have shown these two perpendicular you know they are bisecting the two normal stresses right we have shown clearly in that. So, uh, since we have already familiar with this, so it is uh, we are able to appreciate this concept that you know the, the stress deviator involves shear stresses. So, this is very nice uh, that you know it will become so handy when we discuss uh, plasticity problems right. The stress deviator which involves shear stresses only clock only, uh, only this kind of you know stress deviator can, is responsible for the plastic deformation. So, that is quite obvious from this uh, equation. So, the tau 3 and tau 2 are the principal shearing stresses. we know that. 